Welcome to the Couch GM Podcast. If you're listening to the audio only version, go check out the full video version on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. Today we have on special guest, Abraham Lucas, who is currently the, the starting right tackle for the Seattle Seahawks. He was a four time all pac 12 nominee for the Washington State Cougars during his four year playing career there. He was a third round draft pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. We talked through his playing career from his early days up to current day playing for coach Pete Carroll. And if you'd like to support the Couch GM brand, make sure to click on the link in the description as that'll take you to sign up for my Couch GM newsletter. We got Couch GM apparel and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, today is a special podcast. I am joined by Abraham Lucas, who is the starting right tackle for the Seattle Seahawks. So first off, Abe, really appreciate you taking the time to jump on today. Of course, yeah. Thanks for having me. Before we get into it, I know we're both WSU grads, so get, can we get a quick Go Cougs real quick? Go Cougs always. I got my flag up in the back there. I don't. It's kind of difficult to see, but there we go. I got my football helmet down down below. Love it, love it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get into a bit of your your past at um, down the road, but at first, um, I saw you post on Instagram today stating, you know, it's time to punch the clock, get back to work. Um, I know you can't really talk about certain details, but you were going through an injury. You got injured in week one. Can you just walk us through kind of the mental grind of the process of going through an injury like that that's unexpected, you being healthy throughout your entire career, um, just kind of what that process was, was like working back to, to full health? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not anything super crazy, I would say. Um, I mean, getting injured, getting hurt is kind of just part of things, kind of how things shape up. Everybody gets banged up and hurt and stuff. Uh, only thing I guess I did was I was just, I mean, it's just really a bunch of rehab stuff, and that's going to go for any injury that you see. Uh, some rehab just takes a longer time than others, you know, depending on the injury. So just stuck with that, um, you know, and happy to be where I'm at. Absolutely. So currently in your second year with the Seahawks, how has your experience been so far just playing in the, in the National Football League? Has it fully hit? I know it's your second year. You've already had a full year in the league, but you're a professional football player. You know, what, what's that like? Oh, uh, it's interesting. It's uh, I mean, I guess the biggest difference from college to professional league is uh, the speed at which everything goes. At. Everything's very, very fast. Um, and that takes that can take a little while to adjust. Uh, or a little while to adjust to, depending on who you are. Um, and then, you know, it really becomes a job, um, more of a full-time job. Um, whereas in, in college, you know, you got class to go to, you got that sort of stuff to worry about. Um, you know, you're not necessarily getting paid, although you can now with like NIL stuff, but um, in the NFL, it really is a livelihood. Um, this is how people make their money. This is how people take care of their wives and kids. Um, so that's also a big difference. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, it, it set in a, a long time ago, really like my first day of, of practice that I was a professional athlete, you know, and I was continuing and it's great. You know, I, I've loved it ever since I got here. And you grew up in Everett. I assume that the Seahawks were your team that you were watching growing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back in the so days of uh, Mike Holmgren and Matt Hasselbeck and all of them. There you go. So yeah, that adds like another layer of kind of the surrealness to playing in the league, playing for the team that you watched growing up. Um, what's it like to step on the field in front of the, in front of those 12s? It's interesting. Cause like, I mean, I, I had only ever physically gone to one Seahawk game in my life. Um, but just to be down there, like on the actual field itself is it's very different. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, 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 granted, I love it. Um, but it, I mean, yeah, it's it's almost surreal at times just to, you know, sometimes you have to take a step back and recognize where you are and, and the things that you've accomplished and how far you've came. Absolutely. So let's jump back a little bit. Let's start in high school, um, even before then, if you wanted to. Can you just walk us through, you know, how you got to where you were in high school? You, I know that you were playing basketball, you're playing football. You went to Archbishop Murphy High School in Everett, Washington. Um how did you first get into playing football, playing sports? Which role models did you have growing up? And what did that look like throughout your childhood into high school? Uh, I think I started playing football in like second grade. Um, it was different than what I had expected. You know, when I grew up, I would, you know, I'd play football with my dad and 
uh, every Sunday we'd watch the Seahawks play. It was my it was my dream to catch passes from Matt Hasselbeck uh, when I was older. Uh, and then you know of course that dream was quick quick to be cut short when I realized he'd be long since retired if I was to ever make it to the <laughs> NFL. But um, yeah, I mean so I just I mean I was like a I was like a typical football loving kid. You know I played with my neighbors and such and got into got into tackle football. It was fun. Um, but you know there was. There was, unfortunately for me, there was a couple of really bad coaches. And, and, you know, parents can be the worst in that sort of thing because everybody thinks that their kid is the best. Everybody thinks their kid should play when that's not the case because, you know, some people are better than others and some people are not. And I'm by no means am I saying, like, I was one of, like, the better ones or anything like that. But, you know, there is a disparity um, between who's playing and who's not playing and kids who aren't playing probably aren't playing for a reason. Um but I mean, so I, I kind of, for a little while, I, w- I was out of love with football, uh, just because my experience uh, wasn't that great as a kid. Um, so I was moving over to basketball. I did like AAU basketball, played with a bunch of, played with a bunch of travel teams and such. Um, really thought basketball would be my future uh, going into college. But then I, I mean, I stopped growing. And then in high school or towards the end of high school, I really kind of despised playing basketball. It was just very it wasn't very team oriented to me. And, and you know, I, I had a, a, a slew of bad coaches at high in high school who just didn't really know what they were doing. Um, and so I just kind of fell out of love with it. And then at the same time, like I had come in from middle school uh, as a freshman and me and a couple of my buddies who I went to middle school with, uh, we were just kind of like, you know, let's, let's play for the freshman team. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll have some fun. It'll be, it'll be, nothing special, you know, we'll just go kind of show up and play and whatever. And I I got to campus and I was, I was like six foot four as a freshman or six, three or something like this was fairly tall. I was really, and I was really skinny. And uh, I remember a coach walk up, coach came up to me and he was like a guy who had played in the NFL. And he was just like, Oh man, like you must be like a really big time football player. But I was like, not at all, dude. Like, I'm just, I'm just here to kind of have fun. And so I, I had a lot of pressure from the coaching staff that was there to um, play like pretty early on. And I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't have any interest in it. And, you know, I was peer pressured into it my sophomore year. I was just like, this is dumb. Like I didn't like it. Uh, my junior year, same thing. Um, but what flipped for me was I, uh, I, we were, I, I can't remember the exact game that it was, but um, I think it was like the first round of the playoffs or something, or maybe the game to get to the playoffs my junior year. And I'd gotten benched because I wasn't really playing very well. And I remember it was like a switch flipped in my mind. I was like, you know, if I'm going to be out here, like I'm going to be contributing and I'm going to be playing. And then uh, they put me back in. And I remember I had like this big strip sack fumble, you know, that really kind of, and I was like, I was energized from that. And I was, I was kind of hyped up and I was playing the end at the time. And, and that kind of, after that game, it was kind of like, you know, my mom, I remember my mom and uh, my head coach were both kind of gave me the same message of like, dude, like you could really take this somewhere if you, if you really take it seriously, you know, you could really do something with it, but that's up to you, man. Cause you I mean, let's be real. Basketball is not your future, you know? Um, and the, and the position I played in basketball, I was a center and, you know, there's not any six, eight centers in the league or six, seven centers in the <laughs> league. You know, they're all seven, seven feet tall. So maybe if I was seven feet tall, I'd still be playing. But, uh, yeah, after that, um, after that junior season, junior year season, I mean, I finished the year very strong, uh, but we lost in the the game before the state championship. So coming back from my senior year, uh, I had started to get offers for football. Um, and one of those offers obviously was WSU, but I knew going into my senior year, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Like in college, I had, I had committed, I committed on, I still remember the day I committed August 3rd, 2016 to play for Washington state. Uh, and 2016 was my junior year so or my senior year. So, you know, we had – our team was very, very motivated going into that year, and we knew that we were going to win state, and we ended up uh, winning state. But that's – I mean, since then I've had a real love, real fire for this game, um, and I carried that into college with me, um, obviously, and I was I was able to improve in college and become a really good player. At what point did you decide to go on the offensive side of the ball? Because it sounds like you were doing pretty well on the as a defensive lineman as well. Was that decision made for you or did you make that decision yourself? 
I like I like to say it was kind of softly made for me. Um, my uh, so I'm, I'm still in regular contact with my high, high school line coach, um, who did a lot for my game. Um, he's a really good guy, but uh, he had been for years. He was he was saying, you know, I'm going to turn you into a left tackle and this this and that. And I was like, I was like, dude, like if I'm going to play in, if I was going to play in college, I wanted to be a tight end. Like that's what I, that was my thing. And then. You know, I I played my first three years as tight end and defensive end, and I was having more success on defense. But I was like, I w- I wasn't catching really hardly any passes on the offensive side of the ball, just because our team didn't really throw the ball like that. Um, and so I I told my coach, my head coach, uh, I was like, you know, coach, like going into my this is going into my senior year. I was like, you know, coach, if I mean, if it's gonna help the team, just move me to left tackle. It's not, you know what I mean? Like I can do that. Yeah. It's fine. I've accepted that I'm not gonna be a tight end. And they were happy as hell uh, <laughs> that I was that I was uh, willing to make the move. Um, and so I went into college actually playing left tackle um, as a as a freshman. Right. I mean, obviously, Andre Dillard was still there. So um, there really wasn't any I mean, I wasn't going to beat him out or anything like that. Um, but uh, in 2018, when I or when Cole Madison graduated, I was just moved over to the right side. So I've been on the right side ever since. Cool. Can you talk us through real quick, kind of the difference between playing on the right side of the line versus the left, the left side? Are there any differences between those two spots? Yeah, I mean, I this may be a controversial opinion to some, but I believe that my that the right tackle position is the easiest position to play on the offensive line. Um, from a historical standpoint, uh, I mean, if you look at like if you look at like the center position, I mean, the center has to know IDs, know the entire offense, know who we're going to, and that changes from play to play, and it depends on the defensive structure and such. And then you guys, you have the guards who are right next to him, but they operate within a minimal space, and they offer, and they're kind of like, they're kind of like the bruisers, I say, of the of the offensive line. You know, they're the guys who are really like for real in the trenches. Um, and then if you look at like left tackle versus right tackle. Uh, Historically speaking, most quarterbacks are right-handed. So, I mean, the left tackle, you've heard the, the term the blind side, uh, yep. but the left tackle protects the quarterback's blind side. And usually, historically speaking, they would line up or teams would line up their best defenders on the left side. So if you didn't have a good left tackle, you'd be screwed. Um, and that's kind of flipped. That's kind of changed going into like today's game. Like uh, you start to see, you know, teams have pretty dynamite rushers on both sides now which makes right tackle a harder position to play. But I would say the difference uh, from that historical standpoint is that left tackle would have had to face more um, or better rushers, I guess. And that's, like I said, that's kind of, it's, it's becoming like not the norm nowadays. Like there's, you, you face some dudes on the right side now and you, and that's kind of been, it's been trending that way for like the past 15, 20 years. Yeah, you have the defensive end guys. You got the linebackers that will blitz. You also have the cornerbacks. I mean, we, we see with Devin Witherspoon with the Seahawks, he's been blitzing mm-hmm. and creating havoc. So, yeah, being in those tackle positions, you got to really defend against whatever guy is, is flying in there. Absolutely. Now, heading into college, uh, you kind of talked about that you committed to Washington State. Uh, 2017, you uh, took a red shirt, shirt year. 2018 heading into that year you were named a starter on the line and that was the year that Gardner Minshew was playing for the Cougs so can you just walk us th- walk us through that year the Minshew mania I know that you know there was a lot of um, emotion g- heading into that season with everything that was taking place and then Gardner Minshew comes in Max Borgie's freshman year what, what was that experience like playing in your first season with the Cougs? Uh, I mean, it was interesting. It was an interesting year from the start. I mean, obviously you had the, the, the deal that happened with Tyler Holinsky and that was right in uh, early January. I think it was January 16th um, that all that stuff happened. And that was very, I mean, it was very somber, obviously. Um, I will say in that, uh, that time period, we had a, our strength coach um, who was my first strength coach there, who I have a really a lot of respect and admiration for was very, very instrumental in helping us, not move on, but find new normals as a team. Um, yeah. and to remember him in the best way that we could. Um, and then, you know, with, I mean, when Gardner came in, um, I mean, he had, you know, story about Gardner. He had been, I, I what was he at East Carolina and he was going to go to Alabama and probably yeah. be like a backup there. And, and then Leach was like, 
come lead the nation in passing and yeah, right. word like that's great and you know Gardner coming in was he was a uh, I mean he was really just like kind of a natural leader I mean he's a kind of a weird dude um <laughs> all the stories you hear about him are probably true um I see him living in a van during the off season <laughs> yeah yeah stuff like that he used to he used to stretch in the locker room with nothing but a jock strap on in front of his locker it was and it was just wild but um that's hilarious all, all of that and like a bunch of other stuff, we all, he was a guy that we wanted to play for, you know, and, and we had gotten a new old line coach there, a guy named Mason Miller, um, who was phenomenal, was a phenomenal coach. Um, and I mean, we all kind of just took it in stride. It was like, I mean, we can, we can either fold or we can, you know, really see where this goes. And we ended up as a team collect. I mean, there were so many pieces on that team, so many people who were showing up, so many people who were playing so well. And, you know, we ended up, putting together the greatest, you know, season record wise in the history of the school, which was, it was amazing. Yeah. As you mentioned, the first time that the Washington state Cougars have won 11 games in, uh, in a season, um, you, you yourself were all pack 12 second team named freshman all American, the second best pass blocking lineman in the country by PFF college. Um, and then, I mean, that's just been a reoccurring theme is that you've been one of the top pass rushing linemen in the country consistently throughout college. Um, I guess walk us through the rest of your college career, you know, as you progress from being a redshirt freshman that first year, all the way up through 2021, which was your final year in which you were named first team all packed 12 for the first time, all American honorable mention. And, uh, and then we'll get into the draft after that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, I think the biggest change of who I was as a person happened that first year and going into 2018. Um, yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of growth from high school, uh, obviously. And, and I mean, it was, it, it's a time I look back on and I can remember very, very well. Um, I mean, 2018 was 2018. It was a great year. Um, it was one of my best, one of the most fun times I've had playing football in my entire life. Um, and then, you know, 2019, 2019 was kind of an interesting year. Um, it just, you know, it, it, it felt like people had figured us out. Other teams had figured us out, you know, and it was, I mean, I don't know if it was the seniors that graduated or what, but it, it was, it was hard to get anything clicking to keep going, you know, or to get going rather. And that was on, I mean, that's obviously on us as a, as a team, but I mean, we didn't have a losing record necessarily. Um, it was very, it was just a very average year. Uh, 2020 obviously COVID um, and that was that was kind of a hodgepodge of just disaster you know and and I will I will say this about that time especially with uh, Leach leaving the Mississippi State um, and Rolovich coming in you know uh, there was a lot that was handed to Rolovich that he was expected to kind of come in and just deal with and fix you know um, yeah. and he I mean say what you want about him. I, I, I know how he was portrayed in the media and they, I mean, right. the media really just crucified him it, and it was, it was pretty ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I saw him behind closed doors. I knew who the guy was. I still know who the guy is. I still talk to him. He's a fun, he was a phenomenal coach and he was a phenomenal man. Um, and just, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot. It would be, this, this podcast might be six hours if I talk, if I told you everything. I've got the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, we rallied to him as much as we could. It was it was difficult to not know if we were playing that week, um, just with everything that was happening. You know, I mean, I remember when Cal came to town, and we were all getting ready, and they canceled the game like twenty minutes before kickoff. Jeez. It's like, what do you? It's like, what do you do? You know, and and he was getting he was getting shredded for not taking the vaccine and all this other crap. And and then, you know, when when twenty twenty one started, it was really like, okay, like we have a normal we have a normal season. Like let's see what we can do um you know and and it started off it was a little bit sluggish starting off i just think and i think that the reason for that was um you know when you lay a foundation of something you know that doesn't mean that the entire building is complete um and that's what kind of what was happening towards the beginning of the season there was a foundation being laid and we were getting our asses kicked at the beginning of the year and it was it was tough uh it was it was kind of tough to deal with obviously and and eventually like things started but midway through things started kind of clicking a bit um you know we we had those we had those three games in a row that we won I, i'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty sure it was three games in a row i know we beat oregon state we beat stanford and then 
I don't remember what the other game was, but then, you know, Rolo, of course, gets fired uh, midway through the year, um, which, I, I mean, yeah, I still have yeah. still have cer- certain feelings about that. Uh, and then, I mean, honestly, I'll keep it I'll keep it 100%. Like, I mean, I, I love Pullman. I love Washington State. I always will love Pullman. I always will love Washington State, and I'll always give back as much as I can. But it was very difficult to continue – to play at a high level after all of that happened, especially, you know, we had some, I mean, me, uh, Liam Ryan, Jihad Woods, George Hicks, all these guys who were, you know, had decided that we were going to go one more time, one more round with this. And then to have something like that happen, uh, it was very, it was very upsetting <laughs> to say the least. And, yeah, and it was, it was difficult to find reasons to play. Um, other than the fact that, I mean, obviously we play cause we love the game, but you know, after that, it was just kind of, it was very difficult. Um, so those last games before, like before we played in the Apple cup were very difficult. Um, and then we got to, we got to UW and we had hired a bunch of new coaches and such. Um, Brian Smith, the guy who was the, uh, or who was like, uh, he was a running backs coach. He stepped up and was doing the offensive coordinator's job. He was doing all these different jobs. He did like three coaching positions by himself, brought in all these offensive coaches for us to, you know, obviously, cause like my line coach got fired too for not getting the jab. Um, and then they, so they brought in another guy who was like an, an NFL alum in like the eighties. And he was a phenomenal coach as well. Only had him for like two or three months, but still keep in contact with him. And he was great. Um, and so that made it a little bit easier to keep going. Um, and then, you know, we got to UW and uh, I, I like I had known it was going to be my last game. We were both eligible. But w- when when we walked into that stadium, play UW, I knew that this was I knew this was going to be my last time in a Cougs uniform. Um, and so I figured, why not go out with the bang? You know, why not? Why not try to get this done at least Let's once out there? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we came in, whooped up on them. Um, you know, they hadn't had the best year. They weren't having a great year. Um, and we were finally able to get the edge on them and beat them. And it was, I mean, it was bittersweet. Um, it was difficult to enjoy, but um, I'm very happy that it happened that way. And then, you know, after that, it was like, I knew we were going to the bowl game. I knew I wasn't going to play in the bowl um, just because there was really, there was no real purpose to. Like, it wasn't going to increase or decrease or i guess it had the potential to decrease my draft stock if i was to get hurt or something like that and yeah no real game exactly so i was like this is the this is the nfl we're talking about you know and i up to that point it started 42 games straight so i'm you know i I knew i had i had accomplished my mission so to speak and that was it at the end i i told my i told uh jake at the time who was uh acting as head coach he had not yet been hired but i was like you know i'm not I'm not going to do the bowl game, man. It's no disrespect to you or anybody. It's just, I got, you know, I got other goals in my life that I want to accomplish and, and I need this, I need this time to prepare for those. So that's kind of how that ended. Absolutely. Yeah. I could imagine, I could only imagine, you know, the, the turnover with the head coaches for all these different reasons, the added stress with you being, you know, looked down for having certain opinions on certain topics in that way. And then having to deal with the, the different coaches, uh, you know, having to restart this rapport with them or learning their coaching style and all the all of the momentum that you had at whatever point just kind of gets halted. So, yeah, I could only imagine what you guys had gone through and then especially your final season. And, uh, you know, I could empathize with trying to find the motivation when it's hard to see what you're still playing for beyond just trying to get that paycheck when you do get to, do get to the NFL. Um and I was actually at that Apple Cup that year. That was a fun year for us. Uh, we haven't had too many fun Apple Cups recently, but um, and then headed into yeah. so so yeah after twenty twenty one, kind of walk us through what that draft process looked like, the pre draft, um, working out, preparing for questions, just what that entire process looks like. Uh yeah, so it's it's a pretty it's a pretty loaded process I would say. I think people have the wrong idea when it comes to the draft or people who don't know about it. Um and you know, I I I'll take a step back here. I you know, I'm I'm not like a big like social media guy necessarily. Like um I don't have Twitter or anything like that, but I remember 
when I when I when people found out that I wasn't going to play in the bowl game, there was a lot of kind of hate that was sent my way, you know, and it really? was like, yeah, and I I my favorite one was, oh, he doesn't care about his team. And to my res- which my response was like, dude, I went through COVID year. I started 42 games here. Like, don't tell me I don't care about this team. Even at your all to that point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I went through two teammates' death, another another teammate's near death, and, you know, now my head coach has passed away, you know. So, yeah, and my man. other head coach got fired for not getting a vaccine. Half the staff went with him, like, you know. So don't don't come at me with that. I don't care about the team stuff because it's just not true. But, yeah. Um, but I think that for a lot of people, that opinion would change if they saw really the draft process. Um, so basically like what I did, um, was about a year in advance. I had, uh, I was interviewing with agents. So this would have been the year before my senior year. Um, and I took, I, I took my, you know, I took phone calls, would ask some questions and stuff. And I got that, I got it down to a final four who I really liked and thought I, I gelled with and I had them over to my house and me and my parents interviewed them for a couple hours um and I picked uh my uh so I picked my agent based on those interviews and then um some agencies are different but what they did with me was they uh you know after that UW game or whatever it was like and after or after my school was over it was like that week I was I they flew me down to Cali which was where that which is where it's based out of and immediately got training um training for the combine, training for the 40, training for, you know, 225 bench, training for shuttle drill, all these different drills. Like that's what you train for from, yeah. this would be December, December to like April. So, <clears throat> and they take care of like everything, like rent wise and stuff. You get like a little stipend and such. And then, so, you know, I can't complain. It was, it was, it was nice. Uh, but, um, so yeah, I mean, and then at the same time, um, we're working on like O-line, specific stuff, a lot of specific drills with like, you know, ex ex NFL coaches and players, guys who had, you know, a lot of knowledge to share with us. And I want to say there was like 10 or 12 other guys there as well um, from just different position groups that um, in different schools, you know, that mm-hmm. agent, that uh, my agent and the other agents there had recruited. And, <clears throat> and so we were training, training for the combine. And then for us, we were training for the senior bowl. We were also training for the senior bowl. Um, and that's not everybody because not everybody there is a senior. Like some people come out early, you know. Um, and the senior bowl is a, I want to say it's a week, but it feels like it's like a month. Like you <laughs> you barely get any sleep. Uh, the practices are off the wall intense because everybody's trying to prove to all these scouts that are there that they're the guy, you know. And yeah. And so you, you step up to the plate and you do well or you don't do well. Um, and I did fairly well. Um, I'm not going to say I was the top guy or anything like that, um, but – I did well, increased my draft stock, I think. Um, yeah, there was a lot that went on that week. But uh, <clears throat> come back from the Senior Bowl, I think the Senior Bowl is in February sometime. So when you practice for a week, playing that little game, everybody's got a different helmet on, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Me and uh, me and Jalen Watson actually are part of the same agency, so we went down there together. Um, and then, you know, the Combine comes up, and – uh, I, the, the neat thing about doing the senior bowl and then doing the combine is like, there's, there's two nights in the, uh, in the scene, in the week of the senior bowl where you would, um, they basically run you through like a speed dating type thing with, uh, each NFL team. So you get interviewed by each team and, really? okay. uh, yeah. And you would do half on one night and half on the other night. And so it was, there's 32 teams. So you do 16 interviews each night, um, and they're 20 minutes long. So you'd start at, start at like 7, 7 p.m. Yeah, and you'd probably get out at 1130. Um, and you're just going through and you're kind of just regurgitating the same questions because it's right. all, you know, who are you? Where do you come from? Do you love this game and all this other stuff? Um, so I met with everybody um, one night and then did that the next night. And then when you get to the combine, the combine was a little, I kind of knew what to expect in terms of terms of sleep amount the amount of sleep that i was going to get and then the questions that they were going to ask me but um combine's different because you don't you don't necessarily meet with every team um you can meet with with a bunch or you could meet with like one or two i think i met with nine at the combine um and they each have their own like it's at uh, lucas oil stadium in indiana um or in indianapolis sorry um and um 
every team will have like a individual suite and it's just like a bunch of a bunch of donors and coaches and their head coach is obviously going to be there. Uh, the GM is probably going to be there and you'll sit down and they'll take you through watching film. Um, and then they might try to get under your skin a little bit with some of the questions, which you trained for in like the pre-draft process. It was nothing too crazy for me, honestly. Um, I know they, they don't ask as many outlandish questions as they have in the past. Uh, and especially but, yeah, not and being it, on social media, I'm sure that kind of yeah. helped you out a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I mean, I have no skeletons in the closet or anything. Um, exactly. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, some some teams like you, some teams don't. I know some teams probably couldn't stand me just because I don't like some of the questions they ask. I'm like, why, like, why would you ask this? I didn't say that, <laughs> but I'm thinking in my head, like, this is kind of a stupid question. And, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, did the combine and, or rather you interview the, the days before you do the combine. And I was lucky enough to be in the, the first group of, of offensive linemen that were going to go. So I think we started at like 2 PM and we got done at seven. So that whole process takes about five hours and there was 30 guys in my group going, I was the last one because my last name is an L, um, you know, ran a good 40, uh, had, had a, some good agility drills. Um, and then, you know, after that, it's like, okay, like you're done. The worst, the worst part is over. The interview process is over, um, kind of, um, and then, you know, fly back home the next day or back to, back to Cali, do some more training and then, um, bumped up to WSU for pro day, uh, or no, hmm, was that then? Sorry, I'm losing track here. Uh, you know what I think was before that was the, um, they have a period of time called 30 visits. And each team, each NFL team is allowed uh, to meet with 30 different guys that they want to meet with if they if they want more follow ups from like the combine interviews or the senior bowl interviews or whatever. So, yeah, um, I had I had nine of those. Um, and that's like you do that in their respective cities. So I was so you're flying out to nine different cities. Yeah. Yeah. So I I met with. I'll give you an, or just kind of like an insight into it. I met with Denver. The next day I was in Chicago. The next day I was in Green Bay. The next day I was in uh, North Carolina. Next day I was in Baltimore. Next day I was in New York, you know? So it's just like Man, yeah. this total repetitive. Luckily for me, I got like, um, there was like a period of like three days uh, in between, like it was like on a weekend or something. So I spent Friday, Saturday and Sunday in like New Jersey. And I just cool. like slept for three days straight. I was so exhausted. Slept the entire time. Yeah, yeah, because you don't really get too much sleep on on that stuff, which is to be expected. And then, so I was I was actually I was flying home from uh, San Francisco as my last visit. Um, and as I when I was on the plane, or shortly before I got on the plane, um, it, um, my agent was like, "Hey, the Seahawks want to work you out. You know, is that something you'd be interested in?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, but I'm already on my way back to Pullman for pro day." is there any way that they can come out here and just work me out out here? So then they came and worked me out uh, in Pullman and I had cool. another workout and I had another workout from another team in, in, in Pullman as well, but I don't want to talk about that cause it didn't really go very well. Um, but uh, yeah, I did that and then waited around. I think, I think it was like a week and a half till pro day. So I just stayed in Pullman. I still had my house. I was still renting my house and I was working out and uh, moving all my stuff out and then um, did my pro day uh, I think the draft was pretty shortly after that. Um, and I did my draft in Pullman at the church that I go to, had my family there, had my friends, close family friends. Uh, Rolovich was there. My high school coach was there. My awesome. high school line coach was there. Uh, my college line coach was there. So it was a bunch of people, um, you know, got the phone call on the second day. I knew I wasn't going to get it on the first day, but got it on the second day and then, you know, packed up, drove back over. And that was that. Did you know, did you kind of expect that call from the Seahawks or was it you had no idea until the call was coming or minutes before when your agent let you know what to expect? Uh, I mean, I thought I might've, uh, the team I thought I was going to go to was either, or the teams I'd rather was, uh, Denver and Chicago. I thought it was going to be one of those two. And I knew I was going to be a second day guy. I just didn't know if I was going to get scooped up in the second round or not. Um, but I mean, it was interesting because I was kind of, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty high stress time. So I was kind of sweating bullets and I was just walking <laughs> around and walking around pacing. And, you know, my, my parents were trying to get me to calm down. I was just like, I'm so, like, I just can't be calm right now. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, but it's not working. So I was sitting there and I had my phone on the charger because I kept texting it. So it was running out of battery and 
and I uh, went over to it. it was in the corner of the room and right when I picked it up there was the phone started ringing and I, I turned and looked at him was like guys like I'm getting the call like and the room just went like dead quiet and you know answered the phone picked it up I wasn't even really sure who was on the screen I was just kind of like who it's like, hello like who is this and and it's like oh it's uh, John Schneider from the Seattle Seahawks and I'm like and yeah. I didn't really yeah I didn't really uh I didn't really think about like it's Seattle. I was just kind of like, I was just kind of like, holy shit, like this is happening, you know? And yeah. And then afterwards, after I talked to everybody and I put the phone down and then they announced the pick on the screen, I was like, oh shit, like Seattle. Yeah. Oh, it's Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, that's the hometown. Like I don't, I don't even have to go anywhere. I can just get in my that's car awesome. and drive back over, which was the best. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could only imagine, you, you know, playing for your hometown team that's got to be every kid's dream every player's team uh dream growing up so that's that's a really cool story um did you do the whole dk metcalf thing with pete carroll to where you're just kind of flexing in the in the that interview or what was that no, process no, no, no. like <laughs> i don't have i don't have that uh body type uh <laughs> to do to do what what was going on there um but are you referring to like the phone interview or the combine interview i guess i um I was just referring to that video of DK Metcalf and Pete Carroll, where they both took off their shirts and uh, were like yeah, flexing yeah. on each other. I was just <laughs> kidding around, but um, um, what on the note of Pete Carroll, um, what's it like playing for Pete Carroll? Um, and then also, does the team keep a tally on how many packs of gum he goes through on like a weekly basis or per game? <laughs> uh, I don't. I'm not aware of any gum tally that's going okay. on. I'm sure somebody probably does somewhere. Um. But Pete's great. Like I think, I think he's a phenomenal, fantastic coach. Uh, definitely, I mean, very, very different um, from other coaches that I've been around in the past. Like, you know, if you were to compare like his style of coaching versus Mike Leach's style of coaching, it's like polar opposites. Very different. Yeah. Like, I have, yeah, I have great admiration and respect for for both of those styles um, and how they work. You know, um, and I think he has built up, uh, has been able to, through trial and error and trial and success, has been able to build up a system that works. Um, and you could see it through his, you know, his successes in college and at the professional level. Is he kind of as, you know, level or even um, tempered, like kind of cool, cool, calm, collected as he seems in media? Is that what he's like behind yeah. closed doors? Yeah, very. And he's a very, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find well, a person in general, but really a a, a coach of any at any level that's as positive as he is you know um i mean the way that he i mean it's like it never stops you know it just radiates off of him and and it's very i think it's very calming for a lot of people a lot of his players you know i mean granted he still is is demanding perfection and still is demanding you know that this is how we do things here and he does have his code and you follow it or if you don't follow it you obviously get cut or released or whatever but um, to be able to be a guy, to be a coach that players want to play for is a difficult thing. And he does it very well. Awesome. And then, yeah, walk us through your, your, uh, rookie season, what, what that was like to first preseason, what, the, what's that like to strap up in your first preseason game and then into your first regular season game and getting out and, uh, onto the turf in Seattle for the first time What were those emotions like, mm -hmm. yeah, um, well, the thing I would say uh, that kind of provides more context into rookie year is that it's very, very long. And the reason why it feels as long as it does is because you really don't get a break from your final year of college to your first year as a professional. So it's basically nonstop for those two years. Um, I mean, you, you graduate college or whatever, or you declare, you go to an agency, you're training for football, you, you train for the senior bowl, you go do the senior bowl, then you start, then you're continuing to train for the combine, you go do the combine. And then, you know, you get drafted or whatever. Um, you get probably like two weeks in between the combine and the draft or whatever it is and pro day and all that. And, and then you get drafted and then you're right into rookie mini camp and then you're into OTAs. And then, you know, if you're a guy like me or a guy like Charles, you know, who's, who's coming in, you know, battling for a starting job, then, you're automatically, you know, you're inserted into the lineup and you're playing in, in all preseason games and then you're playing the 17 games in the season. And then we went to playoffs, so you're playing another game uh, after that. You know, so it's a very long year. And, I mean, if you look at that year and you include, like, the Senior Bowl, I guess, as a game, um, you know, there's 22 games played that year. Um, you know, I mean, it's a very, very long 
tedious process. And that's kind of the and that's another one of the biggest differences from college to the NFL is college twelve games, you know, maybe fourteen if you're lucky. Um, NFL it's seventeen games minimum, regardless if you're if you lose every game, you're playing in seventeen games. Yeah. And then does that does that bye week, you know, does that come just at the perfect time to where everyone's kind of needing that and you're able to take a few days? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on uh, where the bye week is put. Uh, like uh, last year, I thought it was perfect. Right in the middle of the season, right after our Germany game, came home, came back uh, back here and was like, I mean, I'm not like a big vacation or anything, but I was like, okay, I'm going to go find a cabin to go to and I'm going to go camp. Nice. You know, so that's what I did for a few days, you know, just to get away from it all. And, um, but yeah, I mean, bye week is very, very beneficial, I would say. Yeah. And then, uh, kind of speaking to the whole Germany thing, you went to play in, in Germany. Uh, that's a unique experience. Do you have a favorite stadium that you've played in so far outside of Seattle? Uh, I don't remember where, where we've played. Uh, it's kind of spotty sometimes. Uh, I mean, I guess. I don't know if I would say it's a favorite, but, uh, you know, Pittsburgh was the first uh, game, like even though it was preseason that I played in. So, I mean, that's obviously going to be something that I remember for a while. Um, there's, yeah, I mean, where else have we played? SoFi Stadium, I'm not really a big fan of because it's pretty modern. Uh, and I like more of like the open you like the old type school. Feel. Yeah, yeah. So like... Uh, we went to green Bay this year for preseason. That was like pretty nice. cool for me just because of like all the history that's there, Lambeau, you know, and yeah. and yeah. Yeah. And like the, the forefathers of football, you know, <laughs> in that, in that stadium, you know, Lombardi. So that was, yeah, yeah, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite. I'm more into like the historical side of things. So if it's got cool history, I'll probably like it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, can you share a memorable moment or highlight from your football career that has had a significant impact on you personally? And that could be, you know, high school, college, NFL. Is there a certain moment or moments that really stick with you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a couple, um, let's say at each level so far. I mean, in high school, when we, uh, there's a whole story behind my senior year of high school playing football, uh, we were we were in a pretty low division just because our school was very small. The school I went to was very small. Archbishop Murphy had like I think my uh, in total when I was there it was like 380 students in total. That's freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Um, but we my senior year we had a really really good team. We didn't lose a game. Um, and our, it, it was like this whole national controversy uh, about you know, did we get recruited? Did people like me get recruited? Because we had like six guys on our team that were really, really big. Um, <laughs> like, I mean, for high schoolers, we were pretty large. Like, I think it was like our O-line was like, it was like me and I was only 260 at the time, but I was 6'6". Six, six. Um, and then and like another guy was like 6'5", 280. Our center was like a 6'3", six, 6'4", three, six, 300 pound guy. The left guard was left guard was like the same way, six, four, 300, 310. And then our left tackle was like 320 or something like that. And also a tall dude. So people were looking at us like, Holy crap. Um, so not a and, single sack allowed all year, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a, I mean, it was a pretty dynamite year that f the first game that we played in, we played against the four, a team. Um, and we beat them 73 to zero in the first half. So, what? so yeah, it was absolute <laughs> ass kicking. <laughs> and to like, clarify, were that, you at two, a school? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so four A seventy three to zero. Yeah, and they <laughs> they didn't end up being very good that year, but it was still like holy crap! Like, how does that happen? A two A does that to a four A, and then I think it was like after the first week, people were like yeah, maybe it's just a fluke. Well, then the second week we won. Who do we play the second week? I don't even remember. But I think we won like fifty to zero or something like that. And then the week after that, it was like we won won like thirty eight to zero. So we just molly wop like our first you guys were decent our, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and then our our fourth opponent was like basically like nope we're not playing against you guys um and i think the reason i think the reason why they did that primarily was oh, they actually I, didn't I remember play. they didn't play no and i remember it was like they only had like 14 kids come out for varsity that year so i understood that but them forfeiting set off like this whole chain of events where it was like the next after them the next three opponents were like no we're not playing against them either and it was like 
then you'd ask them, well, why? Why are you guys forfeiting? And they're like, uh, we're scared that our kids are going to get hurt. That was the main <laughs> reason. They were afraid that their kids were going to get hurt going against these bigger guys. To which Man. my answer is, why, why would you play football if you're scared of getting hurt? And what kind of lessons are you teaching to your kids telling them that it's okay to quit, you know, if something makes you uncomfortable? But Don't play unless you think you're actually going to win. I mean, you know. Exactly. You know, you know and it was and and it was like it was a whole like big thing and like there was like articles about it in the Times, New York Times, it was on Jimmy Fallon made a joke about it um <laughs> on on his show and it was like like we were all kind of like what the hell is going on? Like why is this such a big deal? Um but yeah, they and they did I I say they like you know the collective power that was against us but they <laughs> they did everything that they could to make sure that we were going to have a worse season, which actually ended up kind of being a blessing in disguise. Cause we came into the, we came into playoffs. We were just fresh. Everybody was fresh. There was no injuries and we had to buy all year. <laughs> exactly. And then we went, we went and, you know, essentially kicked the crap out of everybody and, and, you know, got to that state championship game, blew them out and won state. And it was, that was a memorable year. And we were, everybody was balling. It was, I mean, it was the best, like to see all your teammates just, you know, stacking up and, and doing things right. It was awesome. Um, so that's a good memory. Oh, I saw all that collective into, uh, you know, us winning state, which is what we had set out to do from the time we were, we were younger um, in college. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there is a lot in college that I have very, very fond memories over. And I say that just because of the immense like growth that I had as a person through football. Like that first week, that first week when we got there and we were introduced to lifting weights, which I was never really big into, but I got my ass kicked and it was just like <laughs> my, uh, the strength coaches were on, on me. And then, you know, they were just basically telling us how much we sucked and how this was going to be like the hardest thing that we've ever done. And, Everybody, was, I mean, I just remember, I remember getting punished one day, um, not because of anything I did, but our whole class got punished because of some, some of the other guys in our class were like, they skipped like a tutoring session or something. And after the punishment that we had, I remember everybody sitting in the locker room, like, dude, did we make a mistake coming to play college football? Like, is this how it's going to be? But the lessons that came with that and the adjustments that came with that, um, really kind of helped me to mature about things and so I have a really fond memory of just like lifting weights um, or starting to lift weights um, and then taking a back seat to the older guys and really being shown the ropes by those older guys the guys who you know built up WSU um, after like the Paul Wolf era you know with Leach yeah. you know because I mean, Leach is one of the greatest coaches ever in college football, but um, what he did for WSU cannot be, you know, understated at all. And seeing the guys that did it and and then becoming a guy that was responsible for keeping it going was like a big, it was like a big thing that I can remember. And we did that fairly well. Um, and then I guess as far as like professionally goes, um, I mean, the first re regular season game that I played in was a primetime Monday night game. Um, and that was the return of, of Russell Wilson, you know, to Seattle. And so, oh, man. and I think, I think a lot of people thought that me and Charles were going to, you know, do really, really bad or something. And, and, you know, lucky for us, that wasn't the case. We didn't really, we didn't, up, didn't end up doing bad at all, actually, you know, and, and that was, you know, that's something I'll remember forever. Just the first game. I mean, you're going to remember your first game with anything. So, but there's lots more memories to be made. Absolutely. Yeah. You got a long career in front of you. Um, but yeah, I mean, kind of speaking to some of those things, um, real quick, I'll, I'll do a little bit on high school and the college and then NFL high school. Um, let's see here. So you were teammates with Kyler Gordon in high mm -hmm. school, who's a cornerback right now for the bears. He went to play at UW. Um, mm -hmm. so how's that, do you guys have a relationship? Do you guys still talk? Um, you know, what was that like him at UW, you at WSU? <laughs> yeah, Kyle was a good guy. Kyle was really funny. Uh, he's just kind of a goofy individual. Um, but I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find a guy who's more athletic than he was. Um, I don't really talk to him very much. Um, and that's not, it's not, there's no like bad reason for that or anything. You know, if I see him, yeah. obviously I would go, I'd go be very cordial with him, you know? Um, but you know, I'm, I'm watching his success at UW, 
and knowing that we were teammates in high school and seeing what he's doing now in the NFL, it's great. It's very gratifying to me, and, and it's – I mean, I'm, I'm happy for him and his success. Absolutely. And then speaking to college, you guys were – you were talking about your punishments. Um, are the punishments in college the same? Are they all gassers just doing the sprints on the – you know, the entire length of the field or what kind of stuff did you have, did you have to go, go through in college? And then also maybe in NFL, what, what's that look like? Uh, very different punishments. Um, yeah. Le- Leach was a, uh, Leach was an innovative individual. So he always found new ways <laughs> to punish people, but his, uh, one of his favorites was called the uh, tower of London and the tower of London was, I had to do it twice, but it was basically, you would grab like a 25 pound, like chain from the stadium or from uh, the weight room and put it around your neck. Um, and then you put your tennis shoes on and you would walk up every step of the stadium all the way around, sometimes twice, but all the way around. And then uh, when you were, and you know, that doesn't sound so bad. It, it, it adds it, up. It I'm sure. Up you. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your knees are feeling it after that. But, uh, and then after that we did, um, we rolled across the field um, like, legit rolling. And, and I remember, I remember the first time I did it, um, or we were all freshmen. I remember it was hot. The turf was hot. And, and our strength coach who was out there, who was, uh, you know, watching over us, he was, um, he was just like, just make sure you breathe so you don't get sick. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, get sick. Like, what are you talking about? Um, and so I get, and we're not roll, we're not rolling the, the full hundred yards. We're rolling cross field sideline to sideline. And so it's 50 yards there and back and we have three of them and down and back is one and I remember I remember smoking it down the first time right like I get down there and I'm like as I'm coming back for the first one I'm halfway through and I remember like rolling up to my <laughs> knees and my head was my head was whoo, just going in a circle yeah. and I'm and as I'm looking around me like people just start vomiting everywhere and people are just roll people are rolling up to all fours just puking and then continuing to roll and it was just like <laughs> it was like a war like zone busy back yeah, everybody was just totally just screwed up and and then we didn't even complete the full Tower of London, but um yeah, after that I remember I remember standing up and I'm looking at everybody's faces and everybody was just like, What the hell just happened? And and our 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 the our strength coach who was watching us was like the assistant strength coach because we hadn't gotten to working with the head strength guy yet, but but he was like talking to us about, you know, you guys need to show up better, you know take care of your shit type stuff. And I remember everybody was just like, Oh God, like what, <laughs> like what is going on? And, um, so that was one punishment, other punishments you might do. Uh, you like, uh, we used to have bike punishments. And so you get on like an airdyne bike and you bike eight and a half miles in 30 minutes, which is a bit of a push. Um, and then, uh, there was one year we had the every morning or every pre-practice we'd all have to roll in the sand in our pads so it gets really like gritty like underneath your pads and stuff yeah and, and it was un- uncomfortable uh and then not really punishment but we did like midnight maneuvers and stuff like that which is always difficult yeah the midnight um, practices yeah yeah, yeah. uh N- nfl punishments uh it's a little different because you're not i mean you can't really tell a professional anybody to be like hey like go put yourself through like a bunch of pain but you can legally find them <laughs> you know if they're if they're doing something Different wrong, motivation. Like it's into, yeah it's written into your contract so and they're not small fines either depending upon what you do you know so if you're getting 10 grand taken from you for screwing off you're probably going to wise up pretty quick right <laughs> that's awesome and then kind of speaking to you know that whole russell wilson trade you know he gets shipped off and everyone's like oh my gosh the seahawks are going to be awful they ended up going i believe it was eight and nine in 2022 this year they're six and three you know geno smith has been doing great um and then these draft picks that they got from the russell wilson trade have been stellar you know i mentioned devin witherspoon earlier um as one of those picks that they got but just kind of speak to the team right now with the, you know, the vibe, the clubhouse that you're in, the team chemistry, just kind of where you guys are at. You're six and three first in the NFC West right now. You're in a, in a great spot and um, really proving people wrong. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just to keep it going, um, you know, and not get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, I mean, it, like I said, it's a long year. Um, we're on the, the decline, I guess, so to speak. Um, and, you know, so just, you know, continuing to show up like we always have, 
um, you know, eliminating mistakes and continuing to get better um, and not looking like we obviously we have the end goal in our mind, which is to win a championship, but um, focusing on the now so that we can get to that championship. Absolutely. And then what, what advice would you give to an aspiring young football player whose dream is to make it to the, to the NFL? Uh, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of hard work. Um, but recognize that, you know, if you have the opportunity, nothing is going to happen by accident. You know, I mean, you're going to be where you are supposed to be. Um, so surround yourself with, you know, good people who are going to push you and motivate you and help to keep you disciplined. And then, you know, be, um, be coachable. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have all the answers, you know, a lot of, there's people who have coached football longer than I've been alive, you know, I mean, and longer than anybody else has been alive. So why would you not listen to them? You know, they have the experience, they can help you get to where you need to be. Yeah. And then can you share any pregame rituals or super superstitions that you might follow or, or that you have to stick to, to mentally prepare for a game? Yeah, I'm not really that superstitious, uh, so I don't have like a pair of underwear that I wear or anything like that. Um, but uh, not like my you in that area, no, yeah, <laughs> none of that. Uh, but no, I um, what I'll do is I'll get I'll get there pretty early. I'll get in the hot tub, um, and then I'll go out on the field. I'll stretch, take some sets, uh, and you know, I, I usually my music that I have playing is usually like hardcore heavy metal or something like that. And um, okay. You know, I have a certain set list of songs that I don't listen to except on game day. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and then, uh, you know, we get taped and um, get ready. And then you go out for pregame warmups, come back in uh, for a little bit, and then you get back out there and you get it rolling. Absolutely. Well, uh, Abe, really appreciate your time uh, coming on here and doing this. Um, best of luck to you the rest of the way. Getting back out, out on the field shortly, but. Um, yeah, thank you again. Go Cougs, go Hawks, and, and we'll go talk Cougs, to you soon. Go Hawks. Yeah, appreciate it, man.